elaborate in regards to that recovery? Because uh, when you look at real estate, from an overall perspective, uh, it, it's been a little bit difficult, mm. uh, so to speak. <clears throat> Uh, but yeah. based on, on, on what you're observing mm. uh, for, for this particular product, it's, it's different, actually. Yeah, you know, there's an interesting thing is that when there's a shakeup in the market, mm -hmm. people tend to be very risk averse, so they go to trusted suppliers. So although the market has reduced, I think St. Amri's market share has increased because people want to go to suppliers they can trust. So we are seeing an increase in sales. But also, too, the, 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 the collections pick up as you complete the projects. Okay. So as you complete and deliver to, to the owners, there's that pick up. We've also seen it even in Isuzu. Isuzu, if you look at it, uh, market share has been going up over the last two years. Mm -hmm. So people become more sensitive, and they want to go to more trusted brands. OK. And, and that's why, like Isuzu, uh, last week we were celebrating selling our 100,000 car. Mm -hmm. So um, that's what we've witnessed in those two in those two companies. Trust is very yeah. critical. Yeah, trust is critical, yeah. Especially at this time. Because it's of, an important mm -hmm. capital decision for families. Mm -hmm. So they want to put their money where they're confident they'll get delivery. And I think St. Ambrose is offering that. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, looking at the investors into the company, uh, the share dividends, uh, dividends per share, yeah. stands at 33 cents? Yes. We, you know, look, most companies in this period first have cut their dividends completely. Mm -hmm. um, but for us, we didn't want to do that. We still wanted to, to give our shareholders a dividend. Uh, that is very important, although it was a reduced dividend. We were constrained because we don't want the board as a policy, you don't want to distribute um, from capital. You want to distribute from the income you've made in the year. And uh, this year, we, we had a cash income of 245 million, and we're distributing about 218 million. So it's actually the bulk of the cash income, net cash income that we, that we made. And we are balancing against uh, several other objectives. Uh, one of the critical objectives we had in Centum 4.2 was to increase the resilience of the balance sheet. When we got into 4.0 in March 2019, we had about 16 billion of debt on the balance sheet. And one of our objectives was to totally pay down that debt. And that debt was built up over 10 years, from 2009 to 2019, as we made investments which were debt funded. Mm -hmm. So, so far we've achieved about 80% of that objective. We've come from 16 to three. So we have three to go and we'll be fully deleveraged. No. The second objective was to build up our high-yield income portfolio because the objective we had in 4.0 was to move from risking debt where you borrow and invest to risking income where you have a high-yield portfolio that is generating income and what we invest is the income rather than the capital, mm. particularly in private equity. Okay. So that um, even if some of those bets don't work out, then you've not risked the capital. There's a capital preservation model. And that was really informed by <coughs> our outlook, because every strategy is informed by what is your outlook of the economic prospects. And our outlook getting into 2019 was that uh, the economic prospects are not going to be as strong as they were before. Mm -hmm. that was our, that's what was the premise of the strategy. We were seeing more of a succession phase um, with members of our board, so we wanted to reduce the risk of the business. Okay. So we've achieved a lot of, we are on track on a lot of the core objectives, mm -hmm. and we had to balance that with then how much do we distribute as a, as a dividend. Yes, yeah, definitely. And uh, I'm, I'm glad you've touched on, on the vision, the outlook of the company. Uh, first of all, dealing with the debt situation. I mean, uh, deleveraging, yeah, and, and reducing your debt. Right now it's three billion to go. Mm. and. Uh, the main point is now starting to reinvest from your income. Yeah. Uh, debt seems to be to be a critical element of, of doing business. Uh, even yeah. even in real estate, you're saying you know you're building a, a, an opportunity to be able to get more funding from it. So the, the debt situation expand to us how critical it is and, and why you're doing I think this. Noah, the, the the issue is that when you are at an investor. Mm -hmm. The challenge, and you know, we, we've done it for 10 years. We've, we've, we've grown this balance sheet through debt. Mm -hmm. And I was explaining to somebody that um, when I took over the CEO of this company, there was only 10 million shillings in the bank and an overdraft of 170 million shillings in March 2009. 
and there's not been a single shilling of shareholder capital injected in the business. So we had to borrow, invest, and sell, and pay the debt. Okay? okay. Because if you hold, the dividend yield is even lower than interest. Mm -hmm. So it is a very, um, it's not something you can do for long. It's not sustainable. Yeah, mm. and it was necessary to build up the capital of the company Yes. from what we found to where it is. Mm -hmm. Now that where you are, the next phase is then let's preserve what we've built and let future generations now put it in a position, the company in a way where they'll now be reinvesting from income. Okay. So that was the phase of 2.0 and 3.0 was a console, was a growth phase. Mm -hmm. High risk, high growth phase, aggressive. 4.0 was let's consolidate, let us shift the balance sheet so that now investments are made from income. We did not have that luxury in 2009. I wish I had found an entity with income to invest. Mm -hmm. in, instead, what we had to do was borrow to invest. So it's sort of making it more sustainable because if you look at private equity performance across the continent, there are very few funds that have a track record of investing, creating value and exiting. Mm -hmm. A lot of funds are very good at raising money, uh, deploying it, but not very good at creating value and realizing it. Mm -hmm. So it's not easy to, to have an investment model that is debt funded. It's not easy to do it profitably. Mm -hmm. And having done it for 10 years, our view was that it's time to tone down the risk. Yes. Also in line with the succession of the business to make it easier for those who are running it uh, subsequently. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And you, you've talked passionately about Centum 4.0, which is this new phase that you're in. Um, I understand the investment environment. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're a huge believer in, you know, uh, you have to deliver despite what is happening mm -hmm. externally. Mm -hmm. uh, looking at the visions that you have right now under Centum 4.0, has there been sort of a recourse and revaluation uh, in some nitty gritties of it uh, due to this uh, pandemic that we've seen? No, actually, I think it, um, this pandemic just shows that uh, we, we had called it right in terms of sort of taking a view that things were going to be tough. Mm -hmm. Actually, it turned out to be tougher than <laughs> that they were going to be. And we've made progress. It's been two years into the strategy. Mm -hmm. You've come from a very aggressive growth phase, and then you say, wait a minute, we, we don't think this is going to carry on, and we don't want to preserve our capital, so let's... So if you look at the debt pay down target, we are at 80%, building up the yield fund, we are at 75% in two years, and in, and in that period, you've had a pandemic. Uh, many companies, as I said, cut their dividends, some even announced and withdrew later. Uh, we've still sort of be, manage to pay to pay our dividends and even this year still pay a dividend although it's a reduced um, it's a reduced amount so I think it for me it says that it's a right thing to do mm -hmm. to sort of consolidate the business to put it on um, on a very sustainable uh, path mm -hmm. into the future yes yeah. definitely yeah and um, as, as we close up uh, this particular interaction I know for the past year you've really you know broken down the numbers uh, it's it might not look crazy, but at the same time, when you go under the numbers, you understand the explanation behind some some of these drops, uh, especially the consolidation bit of it and taking losses of some 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 of your of your investments. But uh, looking now, projecting into the future, yeah, mm. um, in the in the near term, yeah, I know we are <coughs> under Centum 4.0, uh, of which you rightly predicted that's going to be tough, it's turned out to be a little bit tougher. Uh, in the next five years, uh, if somebody is looking to, to put their money with you, yeah, to invest into Centum, I mean, w what should they expect? No, you know, you know, look, I wish I had more money or other assets to sell to buy more shares at, uh, at the current price because you have a share price at 17. Mm -hmm. Of that 17, 11 shillings per share is cash, is marketable securities. Mm -hmm. So the rest of your portfolio you're getting for six shillings. And the underlying valuation is about 50 shillings. Mm -hmm. And even these 50 shillings, we've heavily revalued it downwards. Because if you're going to take losses, you want to take them once. Mm -hmm. So it's highly, 
you know, you know, discounted. Mm -hmm. So you're starting off from a very low base as an investor coming into Centum today. I think this uh, COVID pandemic has really tested the resilience of our business model. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's proven to be quite, uh, quite resilient. And, and, and we are seeing strong recovery mm -hmm. in a lot of the portfolio companies. We're seeing good recovery. I think as we recover, we'll also have some strong exits. Okay. So we'll continue to consolidate. So for me, I think it's a good entry point. And the fact that the, the low share price has been... I don't think we would have had a major rally given what has happened in the global economy. Mm -hmm. Because our price is very sensitive to what is happening to the broader market. Okay. And so I think it's a good, it's a good entry point. Uh, you can't blame an asset for being cheap in the market. So I wish I had more money, and that's why I think even Chris was buying. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so for me, it, it, from my perspective, it represents excellent value. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, the outlook, very positive. Uh, of course, uh, quite difficult. Cautiously optimistic. Yeah. That's cautiously. our word. Not, not very positive. So cautiously, <laughs> yes. I want to manage expectations. <laughs> Managing expectations yeah, manage is very expectations, critical. Yeah, yeah. But thank you very much, sir, for thank this you, thank conversation. You, no. Thank you, no. And clarifying on Fantastic. this Fantastic. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, with that said and done, that is how Centum is doing. So uh, cautiously optimistic is the closing term of it. And if you are uh, a person who would like to invest with this particular company, you've seen the underlying numbers, the projection, um, and you know the share value. It's, it's pretty friendly, actually, in the market. It's a nice starting point that you can go into it. But overly, that is where Centum is as we speak. With that said, let's take a look at the market. Shall we?